Hi, my name is Sylvie. I am a certified health coach and fitness trainer. And today we're going to be talking about how fasting affects your menstrual cycles and when should you fast during your cycle. This is very important if you are a woman and you are experimenting with fasting, you will find that the timing of your fast during your cycle may have an impact on your cycles themselves. So you may experience cycle disruptions. So it's good to be aware of those so you can take action and do what you can to prevent them and also know what to do if, if it does happen. But before we get into all the possible things that can happen to your cycle because of fasting, I just want to quickly define fasting because most people, when they think of fasting, they just assume that you are not eating at all and consuming water. <laughs> so basically a water fast. But this video actually applies to more than water fasting. It applies with things like severe calorie restriction, like the fasting mimicking diet. So this is the five day fast that we talk a lot about on this channel where you restrict your calorie intake to about 40% your regular calorie intake and you follow a specific macronutrient ratio. And this is an amazing fast. It helps reset your body. It helps stabilize your insulin levels and it's a great kickstart to your weight loss if that's something you're trying to do. And even just to, for autophagy if, if you're trying to heal your body as well. Um, actually, I'm planning on making a video next week to compare the fasting mimicking diet or what I called modified fasting with just a plain water fast. So that'll be very interesting and stay tuned. But that would fall into the fasting category. Um, also, even just changing your diet and going keto, for example, I consider that fasting. Some people, when they talk about fasting, they really refer to anything that takes away from what you are used to consuming. Um, for example, you know, we talk about social media fast. You're used to scrolling social media and you go without social media for a while. Well, that's a social media fast. You're a meat eater and you go vegan for a little bit. Well, that's a type of fast. So any type of change to your diet that may cause stress on your body and may have some impact on your hormones. So this video will apply to all these types of um, dietary changes and they all fall in the category of fasting. Obviously, if you're just, if you're not restricting calories at all and you're just like giving up grains for two weeks or something, it most likely will not impact your menstruations. But it depends, like some of us are more sensitive to dietary changes and to stresses like that. But it's good information to keep in mind and be aware of regardless. And as far as intermittent fasting goes, uh, the benefit of intermittent fasting is that there are so many ways to practice it and adjust it. So if you encounter any menstrual abnormalities that we'll be talking about in this video, uh, you don't necessarily have to give up on intermittent fasting. You can just pick a different method, uh, go slower at first, not necessarily jump in with the 20 hour fasting window or like the OMAD method. So with intermittent fasting and your menstrual cycles, uh, there are various ways that you can fine tune your intermittent fasting approach. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the timing of fasting during your cycle, because that is really the one of the most important thing when it comes to fasting and your menstrual cycles. So many women ask, should I be fasting during my period? For some reason, uh, we, we tend to think that our period is a time where we have to be more careful and maybe when we shouldn't fast, but it's actually the week leading up 
to your period that may cause some issues. And you will notice, if you start paying attention, a lot of us just go through life and uh, we just kind of handle things when they come up without really giving it much thought. But maybe from now on, start paying attention to your cycle and to how you feel throughout your cycle. And most likely you will notice that during that last week of your cycle, you have more cravings and you feel more hungry. And there's a reason for that. Um, your body is preparing for your menstruations and your estrogen level is declining. And that is what is causing those cravings and this increased appetite. And the best thing to do is to listen to that, is to listen to your body and indulge. Obviously, you're not going to go and indulge um, on cake and cookies, okay, or ice cream. <laughs> but it's, it's a good idea maybe to increase your carb consumption and your calorie intake uh, if, if you feel you need that as well. It turns out that even though your sex hormones like estrogen, how fat soluble molecules made of cholesterol, so you know, making sure you're consuming plenty of healthy fat is super important. Carb intake also has an impact on, on these sex hormones. And the way it works is that your carb intake will impact your insulin level, which in turn will impact your leptin level and your leptin level will have an impact on your sex hormones it turns out that your ovaries have leptin receptors and uh, there is a connection between your leptin level and your reproductive hormones so really if you're careful during that last week of your cycle you should be good to go able to start uh, be more strict maybe with your carb intake and your fasting regimen on day one of your cycle. I really noticed a difference myself. On day one of my cycle, the first day of my menstruation, it's like suddenly my cravings are gone and I, I, my appetite is back to a, a more normal level. So it's pretty amazing. And, and if you can pay attention to that, you may find the same thing. But even if you're careful during this last week of your cycle, uh, you know, it is possible that fasting at other times during your cycle will affect your period. And there's a couple of things that can happen and we're gonna talk about how you can handle those. Um, for example, you might notice some spotting uh, throughout the month. You may notice that your cycles become shorter or that you have fewer cycles uh, throughout the year. So all these changes, if they coincide with starting with fasting, well, there's a pretty good chance that there's a connection and maybe it's wise to take a step back. So if you've been intermittent fasting every single day, a pretty a long fasting window, well, you could try to shorten your fasting window and fast fewer days um, throughout the week. For example, a good approach for women who just get started with intermittent fasting is called the crescendo method. And what it means is that you're just fasting every second day. So you could just try to fast uh, for 16 hours every second day and see how that goes. Um, also, another option would be to fast only 12 hours a day. But before you start experimenting with these alternative methods, uh, if you've been having issues with your cycle since you started with intermittent fasting, just stop. Stop completely. Um, wait for your cycles to stabilize again. And then slowly, maybe you can start uh, trying these other methods, these more gentle ways to introduce intermittent fasting. I typically don't recommend that women practice intermittent fasting and carb restriction all at once. So that's definitely something that if you're doing both keto and intermittent fasting, you're a woman and you're having issues with your cycles, definitely something to look into as well. I, I enjoy the keto diet. I have some videos about it and I do do the keto diet sometimes for couple weeks but this is not something that I ever that I have ever done long term and uh, I've never had any issues with my cycles at all so if you have been doing both that might be one of the reasons 
So really, when it comes to intermittent fasting and your menstrual cycles, if you, it's just a matter of common sense. If, if you see changes, you're starting to have issues, well, well, you know that there's something that's not quite right and you have to try to adjust. You have to pay attention to your body. You will find that most likely you will be able to see things resolve themselves. And I would encourage you to not give up because intermittent fasting can benefit most women in many, many ways. The main aspect is lower insulin levels and that will have a cascade of hormonal reactions that will also improve your overall health. Some women even found that intermittent fasting helped eliminate uh, menstrual cramps. So. <laughs> Obviously, you can have some issues if, if you go too far, you put too much stress on your body. Uh, with intermittent fasting, you may find it affects your cycles negatively, but it can also affect your cycles positively if you do it right. <laughs> so I hope this video was helpful to help you do that, to help you practice intermittent fasting in a way that's safe for you as a woman and that supports your hormonal function so that you can reap all the benefits of this lifestyle that I am a big fan of, as you know. All right, thank you for watching and see you next week.